she's caught. Please? You're caught. Oh! <laughs> hey, you're getting posted. <laughs> I will never trust bitches again. I swear to God. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, I'm stuck in this car though. She got to take me home, but damn, I will never trust bitches again. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, I'm testing out some new hardware tonight, so I hope it's going well. And I've got a new a new amplifier, which might let me keep my microphone a foot away from me, and it might still be clear. I'm giving this a test. If the audio comes out not that great, after I edit this or as I'm editing it, I will know and I will fix it. So you don't need to leave a bunch of comments, but I would like to be able to talk and not have a microphone stuffed right in my face. Um, Matt Walsh, women... People in, 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 in relationships, single people, this one video has managed to trigger hundreds of thousands of people into arguments on the internet. Why, I don't know. Why are we listening to some single woman with an opinion about work and everything else? I don't know, but it's, it's doing the rounds. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that for a few minutes because she may have a point. Maybe women are turning into kind of like guys that have gone their own way. Maybe women are going their own way. The Problem is I don't think they're happy. They say they're happy. I don't think they're happy. Can they be as happy as men doing it? Because men kind of naturally are more interested in things and building and you know working with their hands versus women that are very social butterflies. Maybe she's okay just having a bunch of friends. I don't know. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, before we jump into that, usually I do this at the end of the video, but I'm going to do it now. Uh, I've got a discount uh, right now, and it's S. Uh, you can put in the, the promo code SUMMER, S-U-M-M-E-R-Y-R, uh, which is abbreviation for year, summer year. And uh, instead of an annual support of 50 bucks, because at five bucks a month, that would be $60 a year, but I, I knock it down to 50 uh, for your support. I got 12 bucks off right now. So you can support me for a full year for $38, which is like $3 a month. I would appreciate it if you would. Uh, and we've got really great forums. We do uh, Saturday Night at the Movies. We do a lot of, of events over there. Got a great group of guys with awesome conversations. So if you'd like a good place on the internet where you can uh, kind of converse and be with like-minded people, jump over there, check it out, and I would appreciate the support. Um, the first video I'm going to get to is the one that originally triggered everybody in their, their argument. It's this gal. And, and Matt Wal Walsh says, her life doesn't revolve around her family and kids so instead, it revolves around TV shows and pop stars. Worst of all, she's too stupid to realize how depressing this is. Now, this, uh, this has 36,000 likes. It has a ton of replies. It's been viewed 34.8 million times. And, and as you know, Matt Walsh is very conservative, and he, he definitely believes, hey, the, the route to happiness is marriage and children and community. And there's a lot of us guys that would be like, yeah, man, I agree with you. There's only one problem with that. I don't have the opportunity to, for that anymore, uh, or I haven't met the right woman, or I thought I met the right woman, and she ran off with her ki my kids and dragged me through court. Too many men realize now that this is becoming more and more a pipe dream. So if we go by the conservative Matt Walsh's standards, all of us, are, well, the vast majority of us that watch this channel and me, myself, we're complete losers because we don't, surround our, our lives with family and wives and kids and all that stuff. And instead, you may surround it with certain hobbies. I surround it with certain hobbies. And because that's not family and kids, that makes us stupid. I'm going to let the video play here so you can hear it. Let me adjust the volume so I don't blow any ears out as we get started. It's 10.45 a.m. on a Saturday. I am 29 and single, and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday morning looks like when you're single at 29 and you don't have a kid running around the house. I didn't rise from my bed until 10.15. Every time I thought, I should probably get up and do something, I thought, why? Nobody's making me. I'm not missing out on anything. I went to Beyonce last night, and I didn't get home until 1 a.m., and I danced and drank my little heart out, and I didn't pay a babysitter to watch my kids as I did that. And I woke up a tad hungover this morning, which is probably why I I was in bed for so long and I was just scrolling on my phone and I saw a picture of Shakshuka and I thought, you know what sounds really good? 
maybe I'm gonna learn how to make shakshuka today. Cause I have no plans and I don't have kids and I don't have a husband and I don't have errands to run. I can go to the grocery store and learn how to make shakshuka. So that's on my agenda today. Also on my agenda, probably a rewatch of some Real Housewives of New York. I'm also doing a rewatch of Normal People on Hulu, which is really spicy and I highly recommend. Weirdly, I'm into this documentary on Netflix about blue zone countries. So I've got a pretty stacked day. Anyway, I say all this to say, whenever I'm hard on myself about why I'm not married and I don't have kids, Kids and I should be further along at 29, almost 30. I wouldn't want to do anything else this Saturday. And I know that you can do all these things when you have kids and you're married and I understand, but the effortlessness and ease of my life, just kind of focusing on myself and the shakshuka I want to make or the Beyonce concert I want to go to really pays off when I'm hard on myself for not being where society tells me I should be in life. So she... she she puts out her, her argument there, and in many ways, I think that's similar to a lot of us guys that are, have gone our own way and doing our own things. You know, when I wake up, uh, for example, I do Saturday night at the movies. A bunch of us uh, uh, jump on a live stream. Uh, I play a couple of movies with the subtitles on so you can read as I'm talking, and that's my live stream. Well, we talk, we joke about stuff, we talk about current events, we watch the movie, we talk about the movie. And I have drinks, and many times I wake up Sunday a little worse for wear, uh, although I, I'm usually awake and moving about by 8.30, not 10.45 or whatever she said it is. And then, and then what do I do? I'm doing work on the computer. I'm, I'm maybe working on my building here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something, but it's not a job. It's not family. It's not a, a wife or that kind of thing. So in many ways, you could say, dude, she's kind of living the life you're living, and many of us guys are living, so why is this so bad? I personally don't see this as a bad thing, even though Matt Walsh and other conservatives do. But there's one key difference. There's one big difference. Is that men, men naturally don't have any value to society. It's all about what you provide. You know, you, if you go off to conflict for your country, you've got value. Well, value while you're doing it. Afterwards, they don't care so much about you and taking care of you after you're, you've maybe had your legs blown off by something. They don't care so much, but you've got value. Uh, for, for a household or for a community, if you're providing labor or doing protection or paying taxes, you've got value. But if you're just sitting around like a lump on a log, men don't have any value. Women, by default, have some value whether it's their beauty, whether it's, uh, I don't know, the fact that they're just women. <laughs> and let's be honest, that is a thing now. So where's the difference come in? The difference comes in in this. I don't have any value to anybody, nor have I ever, unless I'm providing something. But women have value inherently, usually because they're seen like children and small animals, which is they're defenseless, they need protection, they need love, if a, if a woman that looks like this gal gets in trouble, now I'm not saying that she's, you know, gorgeous or anything like that, but she's, she's not, she, her face is symmetrical. She's not hard on the eyes. There are plenty of men that if they saw her broken down on the side of the road, uh, flagging down to get some help, there's a lot of guys that'd be like, hey, damsel in distress, I'm gonna help her. She has that value because again, she's female, not bad looking. What about a man doing the same thing? A lot of people look and say, ah, he could probably maybe hurt me. Maybe he's aggressive. Uh, if he can't fix his own car, he's not a real man. He should figure it out for himself, right? What's the difference? That value for me at 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70, that value never changes, no matter what age I am. So at 50 years old, if I decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to be helpful and help out people and and be a protector and be a provider and pay my taxes, that's still valuable to society and a lot of people. It doesn't do much for me personally, but at least other people will see value in me. But when women like this lose their looks and their fertility and their femininity and they start getting wrinkles and sags and everything else, now their value as possibly a, a mother, as someone that can rear a child, that's gone their looks, their fertility, their beauty, gone. Can she protect? Can she provide? To some degree, to some degree, but not nearly as well. And so she loses value over time. 
it's very easy for these young, beautiful women or, you know, relatively attractive women who still will walk in and men will offer to open doors for them and men will offer to buy them drinks and men would like to get to know them. It's very easy to feel like, hey, you know what? I have control of this situation. I can decide when I wanna date, when I wanna interact with people, when I wanna start a family. It's all up to me. But if she waits too long, and instead of being 29, she's now 39 or 49, then her choices are set in stone. And it, as you well know, it's a big difference between I want to have a family, I don't feel like doing something right now, and I can't do something anymore. So if she's still this way at 39, but all of a sudden she can't have kids, and the men that she wants are now with the 29-year-olds, and she realizes, hey, there's no one that I'm going to be able to marry and be, and be a part of their life. I'm going to be single and working until I'm 65 or 70 when I can retire. And all I have is my female friends, but maybe many of them have found men or are married or have kids. It's a whole different story. She's going to feel very alone. The difference with, with men like us is that she now, while she's young, feels that she can make whatever decision she wants and she can get married and have kids whenever she wants, and she can work her job if she wants. It's all up to me. Well, that, that can change as she gets older. For us men, it's, it's, we never have that. It's all up to me. As a, as a 29-year-old man, if you say, hey, you know what? I'll find, I'll find the right person. I'll get married. I'll have kids. I'll have that family. Things will go very well for me. Let's, let's be honest with it, okay? Uh, let's be honest with it. I think a lot of you realize, hey, you know what? That's not up to me. That's not up to me. And the women, a lot of these women are, are not picking guys like me. They don't want to get involved with guys like me. This may not ever happen. That's the difference. I think men that say, hey, I'm doing my own thing. Uh, you know, if it happens, it happens. We know deep down the odds are against us and they always will be. This woman thinks the odds are in her favor and at any point she decides, okay, I'm gonna make this happen now. She thinks she can make it happen. The difference is biology and time and a lot of other things are against her. I bet if you ask this woman, in, if instead of at 29, and if at 39, she still feels the same way, I bet you that would change. And it's these influencers that uh, basically I think are ruining women in, in society today. Uh, this is also from Matt Walsh. He said, it would be great if we could go just one day without a woman on social media promoting shallow, shallowness and selfishness as a path to joy and fulfillment. Now, uh, uh, many of you may recognize this, this uh, person here. This is Emily Ratajkowski. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Ratajkowski. She's a model. She's beautiful. She has all, a lot of it. And I think she's relatively young still. She's beautiful, she gets attention from men. She could find a man at any point she wants to. So let's hear from somebody that feels that she has the entire world ahead of her and she can decide to do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. So it seems that a lot of ladies are getting divorced before they turn 30. And as someone who got married at 26, has been separated for a little over a year, 32 I have to tell you I don't think there's anything better if being in your 20s is the trenches there is nothing better than being in your 30s still being hot maybe having a little bit of your own money figuring out what you want to do with your life everything and having tried that married fantasy and realizing that it's maybe not all it's cracked up to be and then you've got your whole life still ahead of you um, so for all of those people who are stressed or feeling stressed about that, about being divorced, like it's a, it's, it's good. Congratulations. Congratulations. She's 32 and she's a model. She's hot. She gets attention. She's addressing all the young women that have tried to be married and realized, oh, as a married person, I need to, uh, maybe not be selfish and maybe be a little giving and, uh, be in a relationship with somebody where I need to, to share and, give and, and take a little. And, and so her advice is, hey, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Like you tried it. 
wasn't for you. Don't be down on yourselves. You have the rest of your lives ahead of you. And, and, and nothing bad here, says the 32-year-old super hot woman. But again, you notice all the people that are saying this stuff, her giving the advice to other young women and the other young women listening going, wow, man, this supermodel, she got married at 26 and divorced by 27. And here she is 32, figuring out her money, figuring out her life. This is no big deal. I'm gonna listen to her. Well, number one, you're probably not a supermodel, ladies. Guarantee it. <laughs> and number two, can you imagine, basically what this is like is, is taking, taking a woman's life and making it, making it hard mode. Like 20s for women is easy mode. You're fresh out of college. All the boys want to date you or you get plenty of attention. You don't have really any bills, nothing to worry about, nothing to, to lose sleep over. Oh, you tried marriage, didn't work. No worries, honey. You got the rest of your life and career and everything ahead of you. And it reminds me of, um, what's, the, what's the show there? Saw. I forget which Saw movie it was, whether it was one or two. I think it was two or three, one of the Saw movies. And as you know, he, puts a per, uh, he locks a person in a room or puts them in a situation where it's to get even with them. And there was one where, and I think I've mentioned this before, but it's such a, a perfect metaphor for what these women do to themselves. Uh, he puts a vegan in a room with a, a freshly cooked steak. And he says, hey, if you wanna leave the room, all you have to do is eat that steak. And the woman, instead of saying, you know what, I'm trapped in here. There's no way out for me except if I eat the steak and leave. If she just sat down and ate that steak when it was fresh and hot and the door would open and out she goes and she might feel bad and she might cry a little bit over the stress of it, but she, she had a good steak meal even if that's not what she wanted and she got let out. But instead, the woman sits in the room and she refuses to eat it. And the steak gets older and older, and pretty soon it starts to rot, and pretty soon it's got you know flies landing on it. it, it smells bad, it's gone bad. And then she realizes, you know, if I wanna get out of this room, I still gotta eat that steak. And so she eats it at the worst, in the worst condition. You're just like, oh, that's, that's rough, man. That's what these women are doing with their lives. They have that fresh steak. They have every opportunity, every chance to have a great life. And women used to, you know, they'd have a little bit of fun in college. And then, you know, in the last year or two of college, they'd, they'd really get serious about finding a, a guy or maybe they'd get a job in, as a secretary or whatever various other work they did. And it was only, you know, I'll keep myself afloat until I find a man. And off they were married at 24, 25 years old. Then, it, then they worked for the husband. Then they worked for their kids and their family. They still did work. It just wasn't from a stranger that, that didn't care about them. It was for the family. Now these women are waiting and they're waiting until their mid thirties, early thirties, late thirties, early forties, freezing eggs, all this other stuff saying, oh boy, that steak's getting pretty, but I'm just gonna keep hanging in there and it's gonna somehow turn out better than it ever was. They do that to themselves constantly. And again, why is this important as men to know? Because these are the women that come sniffing around, the women that wouldn't give you a chance, the woman that didn't wanna to talk to you, you know, several years ago. Then they come back around. Now they got a couple of kids. Now they got a body count. Now they got a, a job that they care about more than anybody else. And now they come around saying, hey, you wanna to talk to me? No, you're, you're the old, you're the three week old steak. I either want nothing or I want the fresh steak. And these women are just, they're, they're waiting until they're old steak. That's what they're doing. And here you have a, literally a supermodel telling these ladies, don't worry about it, ladies. Okay, let's see how that turns out. And how do they turn out? This is the last video I have. This is a woman that has decided instead of being young, attractive, finding a man, building a family, having a, a, a cohesive unit to you know, a tackle the world together, she's decided she's gonna enter corporate America and she's gonna work hard. I want you to see how empty and lonely this woman's life is because you think it's bad now while she's young, wait till she gets older and those other friends maybe got married or those other women are doing their own thing. 
and all the guys she wants to date are dating women younger than her. We're going to have such a generation of lonely, sad women. I wouldn't be surprised if women in politics didn't start making laws to force men to ask them out. You watch. Let's, let's, uh, let me play this one. All right, come to work with me as a consultant in New York City. Um, are you guys aware that corporate America is literally just a fictional construct we all choose to believe in? Um, yeah, anyways, Ubered to the office instead of subwaying because I am lazy. Um, supposedly, we shared this building with the NHL, which is kind of cool. Um, it took the elevator up to like the 900th floor, which is my least favorite part of the day because it's just kind of terrifying. Um, grabbed a coffee and then went to go find my spot for the day. We do like hoteling, so nobody actually has an office. You just like get assigned a spot. Um, they've been giving us two laptops now so we can double our productivity. So I Excel modeled for five hours, ate some free snacks, got lunch with a coworker, and then the office dog walked by. He's so cute. We're so blessed. Um, and then I had a meeting with like 100 people, Excel modeled for five more hours, and then Ubered home. Yay, corporate America. Let's do it all again tomorrow. So obviously, she, now she's in corporate America. She's a big earner, supposedly. She's working in New York City. But, but the one, can you imagine having this life or, or being a mom? Like my mom, when we were kids, um, we'd get up in the morning. Dad, she'd make breakfast for us. The kid, we kids would get ready for school. Um, and it wasn't like fancy. Like she wasn't doing pancake, eggs, and bacon every morning. Trust me on that. I wish she did. That was saved for like maybe a weekend or Sunday after we came back from church or something like that. Most mornings it was, you know, she was making coffee. Uh, she might make my dad a couple of eggs or toast. You know, that was about as far as she cooked really in the, in the most mornings. But usually we just all had cereal or something. She might make my dad coffee and toast. And that was it. And off dad went to work and off we kids went to school. Now, when I was sick and I'd stay home every once in a while or played sick, so I, could, I just didn't want, to go to, I didn't want to go to school, what did she do all day? She'd get the laundry together, load up the washing machine, and she'd sit down and, and watch a soap opera. And then she'd go down and switch it over to the dryer, start that up and come up, and maybe she'd wash a few of the breakfast dishes while watching the, her soap operas. And then she might get on the phone and talk with a friend for half an hour. And then she might start thawing some meat out of the freezer for dinner later on. Like, that was it. But the difference is, she was home, you know, with our pets. I mean, we had dogs and cats. Uh, she had friends on the phone she chatted with. She watched her soap operas. And more importantly, she was in her own house. She was in her own house. She was working for herself. She was working for us kids. She was working for my dad. And you know something? When, she, when dad came home, she'd have dinner ready. Or when we'd come home, she'd have dinner ready. And then we'd all hang out and watch TV together. It was kind of awesome. I think there's a lot of men that would really like that, but the opportunity just isn't there because of these type of women. But the thing that struck me about this is she's in the elevator alone and she rides it up. And then look at this New York City street. There's no but there's not a single other human being on that street. And then she gets here to the the building and as she walks in, you got a security guard there and there's no one else there. And she buzzes in and there's no one in that hallway. And she walks out into this other room and she, either she's the first one there, but there's no one else. And she gets her coffee and, and goes, she doesn't even have her own office. They do what they call hoteling, which is just grab a spot, set up for the day, and then GTFO, get out. And she has a little snack. And if you look here, yeah, there's a couple other people in some offices, so people did trickle in here. But she's still eating. She's eating and sitting basically alone. Her only companion's a robot dog. She, look at this boardroom she's in. Now, she says she had a meeting with 100 other people. Maybe she went in a little bit early, but it's, it seems very sterile. It seems very lonely. It seems very sad. Can you imagine being a, a, a boss bee, going to college, getting a great degree, saying, oh, I make 300 grand a year as a whatever in New York City, and this is your life? Yep, you're going to have fancy laptops and maybe a nice car someday, and you'll meet, you know, Todd, the executive and you both, you know, live together and maybe 
do each other every twice a week in missionary style before he, you, you know, you go into the gym, that, that that's your life? The, the, the women that, are, that are, are not wanting to be with men really is kind of what started all this. I don't know a whole lot of men that if you said to them, hey, would you like to, you know, have a job that you like in a, in a home and a, and a family, but you knew that the odds of you staying married and the kids would, you know, stay with you in that house and that the odds were pretty good. The odds were pretty good. I don't know too many men that would be like, nah, I don't, I don't really want that. I don't know too many men. It seems to me the women today are the ones that will go, nah, I don't want, I don't want that. So instead, instead of working for a husband and kids, they want to work this way. This is the life they want. I don't know about you. It seems, it seems sterile. It seems sad. It seems lonely. And eventually, that, that's all they're going to have. That, that, that'll be the end of that. You know, you take this, this model here. Yeah, her life is completely different. She's beautiful. She'll probably be beautiful well up to maybe her 50s. And, and yeah, she'll probably land on her feet. She's rich. She's a model. But you take your average girl like this. Does she look thrilled, sleeping, you know, laying her head aside? And does, Is this the life anybody would want? Women have traded this freedom and independence for their own money and their own lives instead of working for their own kids, instead of working for their husbands, instead of working for the family. Because that's what men do. A man that's married and has kids, he's not really working for himself. He's working for his family, and he knows that. And when my mom worked for my father and us kids, she wasn't, you know, she, she didn't report to my father. He wasn't the boss, but, you know, he was the, the head of the household. She would defer serious, they'd have discussions on, on serious discussions, and then they would either come to a consensus or my father would win the 55, 45% argument, you know, and they would go his way. She, but most of the time, most of the time, let's be honest, moms are usually the ones that have the final say. We know this is true. So now she answers to a corporate overlord that could care less if she's working for him or gets hit by a bus on the way into work. And it's the women that seem to be doing this. I don't get it. The, the lie of feminism has completely ruined women's lives. And in turn, because women's lives uh, have been turned upside down, I think they ruin men's lives. And ironically, ironically, if you were to ask women, who started all this? Who, who made this problem? They'd say the patriarchy. They'd say selfish men. They'd say, they'd say it's our fault. The big lie. That's, that's, what's, that's where our society is. I think we're going to have a lot of very, very, very sad, lonely people. I think a lot of them are going to be on medication, a lot of wine moms and cat moms out there. And in the meantime, I think guys are just like, well, I would have liked to have a family, but you know something? I, I got my guy friends. I, there is no easy mode for men. Women always feel like they have a backup. Men rarely feel like we have a backup. So what, the, the adjustment, I think, is harder for men uh, to, to be prepared for the, the, the lonely road ahead. But once they make that decision, I think they're okay. Like it's, you know, maybe not okay, but they're like, hey, I'm a, I'm a dude, this is the way it is. These women, I don't think, they don't know what's coming for them. They're sitting around and they're waiting as, and that steak is getting older and older and more wrinkled and more smelly and more, more not delicious. And they think they have the advantage in waiting. And in the meantime, they don't. They should, they, sh they should get the man, make the family, be happy. And instead, they just wait till it's all gone. So I think Matt right, Walsh is right with some of this. You know, that, that, that sh it is different for men than women. I don't, think he, I don't think it's necessarily, like he says she's stupid to realize how depressing it is that that she's worrying about TV shows and pop stars instead of a family. That's not stupid. Just like I don't think it's stupid if a man wants to play a video game or if a man wants to watch sports or if a man wants to go to a pool hall or go ride motorcycles with friends. That's not stupid. What's stupid 
is this woman not realizing that she's got finite time to get it done and then it's going to be too late for her. Where a guy that if he keeps himself healthy and, and slim and trim and makes a good income, that guy, if he's really a good catch, he'll be dating a woman that's her age right now at 29 when she's 39 wanting that same dude. Or the men that realize I don't have any opportunity whatsoever, they've, they've already come to terms with it. This woman hasn't. And by the time she comes to terms with it, it'll be too late. Uh, guys, once again, please join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com forward slash support. Put in SUMMER, S-U-M-M-E-R-Y-R, SUMMER, all caps, and uh, get, a, get a nice little fat discount. Instead of 60 bucks a year, it's now $38. You can come over and join me today. Great group of men, large community. We always have posts and, and good discussions. And of course, we've got the uh, Saturday Night Movies and some other events. So come on, come on over and join us today. I would appreciate it if you do. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.